We will look at Incan megalithic sites like Machu Picchu all in one segment because Incan stonemasonry was all done more or less the same way. In regard to Incan building, Ancient Aliens focuses most of its attention on the curved or beveled edges of the stones. They say that it looks like the edges of these stones were melted. Notice as we listen to them build the case for this that the reason they believe this is true is based entirely on the way the stones look. There are signs in many of these stones that show very large amounts of thermal heat have been applied to mold the stones in such a way that they fit perfectly and so it really does raise a lot of questions. If you look at the style the Sacsayhuaman wall was built, the blocks look as if they've been molded like putty. If you can mold stone into place, then all of a sudden, as crazy as this sounds, it makes more sense. Now, melting granite or any other stone and reshaping it would leave unmistakable evidence in and on the stones themselves. In other words, if the rocks were melted, it would be easily provable. It would not be a matter of what the stones look like. It would be a simple yes or no question. Ancient aliens skips this step of proving or disproving their theory. Instead, they assume that the rocks were melted based on the look of the stones and move on to the step of trying to figure out who would have the technology to melt stones. I have a, a stone torch, which I use for sometimes shaping granite and I mean it generates a temperature of in excess of 3,000 degrees. 3,000 degrees. That's a lot. When we look back at the ancients and we see a technology that they couldn't possibly know, there's only two possibilities of that. Either God did it, which we really don't think happened, or some high-tech civilization from another planet came and showed them how to do it, then took their materials and tools and went back home. I think there's at least one more possibility that Mr. Dunn may have missed. Every shaped stone at any Incan site has what archaeologists call pit marks or pit scars. They occur when stone hammers are used to quarry and shape the stone. In addition, archaeologists have found a huge number of Incan stone hammers at the quarries. And, almost uniquely to the Incans, they are found at the building sites too. Because the Incans only rough cut the stones at the quarries, they did the finish work on site. So, the stones would perfectly fit the stones around them. Well, how did the Incans accomplish these beveled edges? They used a smaller gauge stone hammer for the outer section. The evidence for this can be seen on every single stone that has these edges you can see that the pit scars are much more numerous and smaller on the edges, showing that more blows with a smaller stone was used to achieve the detail work. Another reason that this is no mystery to archaeologists is because there are a large number of stones in various stages of construction in the ancient Incan quarries. These stones reveal that indeed the Incan stonemasons were using some of the most basic tools, even for their time. If you would like to learn more about the details of this, I'll link you to some peer-reviewed papers that can tell you more than you'd ever want to know, including details of experiments done. For example, a single scientist in 90 minutes accomplished similar cuts with similar tools. And all of this makes what Dunn says here one of the most off-the-wall things ever said in the Ancient Alien series. I can't help but think that whoever was behind this thought the process through from beginning to end. They didn't quarry the rock and then decide, how the heck are we going to transport this? They knew, from beginning to end, what needed to be done with whatever techniques and technology they were going to use. In industry today, there's a kind of an adage, keep it simple, stupid. Based on his experience, Mike Dunn believes the simplest way to build the great walls of Machu Picchu would have been to transport small rocks to the site then melt them and use molds to fashion the exact size and shape needed. So he says it's more simple to melt the granite, something so complicated that we don't really even know how to do it today. Is that really the most simple solution he could come up with? And then to say that they poured the melted rocks into a mold. I mean, look at these walls. Can anyone look at this and say, yeah, that looks like they were made from the same mold? These are not exactly bricks of the same size and shape. 
unless he wants to say that they made a new mold for every block, in which case we would go well out of the range of this being the most simple solution. As far as how the Incans moved the stones into place, they left us a lot of evidence behind in the form of ramps. There are Incan ramps all over the place still in existence today, in the quarries and at the building sites. The Incans had one of the most massive workforces in all the ancient world. They were like the Roman Empire of the West, and they had an absolutely huge labor force at the ready for these types of projects. So we know these rocks were not melted and put into molds as ancient aliens tells us. We actually know exactly how they made these rounded edges because of the pit marks left behind as well as the huge number of stone hammers found in the quarries. There are no mysteries that require alien input with ink and stonework. Many people are familiar with these images of stone heads, called moai by the locals. Ancient Aliens tells us that nothing is really known about them. How in the heck did they make these? Where did they come from? And how did they move them? Nobody has the answer. This isn't true at all. For instance, we know exactly how they were cut and shaped, because the construction of the moai was abandoned abruptly. So there are plenty of examples of moai in various stages of development. Also, the stone tools that they used to pound out the relatively soft volcanic rock were found all over the quarries. Here's a clip of one of the locals explaining to his grandson how the moai were built. He thinks that 20 people carved this moai over a period of time of five to six years to this stage. This is our sections of people who were, you know, given you know, as your assignment. This is your section. You can carve, and you can see different, you know, ways of doing it. And you can clearly see the talking marks and and how the people were carving and going in and make these deep cuts in the rock like this, that. The channels reached around and eventually formed a boat-like keel until the statue could be snapped off and fully extracted. Ancient Aliens spends most of its time here discussing the moving of the Moai, and it's interesting the angle that they take, because it seems that they are aware that there have been many successful experiments moving Moai with wooden sleds and minimal workers, so Ancient Aliens has to do what they do best, create a false dilemma. But there is a unique problem with the idea of moving moai with sleds or rollers. When you go to Easter Island, you don't get the impression they had enough wood to have rollers. And in fact, in the 1700s, the first four expeditions to Easter Island never really saw a tree. And so that's the real mystery of Easter Island. How can you move a multi-ton statue if you have no trees for rollers? So, they say there are currently no trees on Easter Island. Therefore, they assume there were never any trees on Easter Island, and therefore, well, aliens. The problem with this is that there used to be a lot of trees on Easter Island, which we now know because of extensive pollen samples taken from the crater lakes, as well as other methods. In fact, the very reason there are no trees on Easter Island now is probably because they used all of them while moving and lifting over a thousand moais over hundreds of years. In other words, they used all the trees. One interesting thing about Easter Island is regarding soil erosion. If you take a land that once had a lot of trees and cut them all down, then you will have a massive soil erosion problem. This is because there would be no more root systems to hold the soil in place. Also, the rains no longer have anything to stop their velocity. The soil erosion at Easter Island is so notorious that if you type soil erosion into a search engine, you will see that the Wikipedia page has a picture of Easter Island. Some of the Moai actually have full bodies, they're not just heads, but because of soil erosion, even in a very short time, they have been covered up to their necks in soil. This is a direct result of the land being completely deforested. So we know for sure how these Moai were cut and shaped, that is, with simple tools which are found all over the quarries. And we know that if they had trees on Easter Island, then there are no problems with moving them and prying them into place. And Easter Island used to have a lot of trees before their fascination with creating moai exhausted their supply. <laughs>